One thing I know for sure is that someday they're going to figure out a cure for hearing loss. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 157, and today I'm getting into some more of your questions, but before I do, do me a huge favor, click that like button, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on so you get notified every single time I post one of these new videos. Now. Before I get into the questions that you guys have for me today, um, I do want to give you a little bit of an update. I was supposed to be making an announcement today on a project that I've been working on, but that got delayed. It won't be coming out till next Sunday, so make sure that you watch next Sunday's vlog. That's going to be some big news, and I'll kind of give you an understanding of this entire project, why I started it, and uh, what it's ultimately going to mean uh, for the future of you guys and your hearing health care. On top of that, today is the Super Bowl, so so who do you got? Let me know in the comment section below. I will be monitoring the comments of this video throughout the day, but super excited for the Super Bowl. Um, I'm rooting for the Chiefs because my wife is from Kansas and her entire family, of course, is going to be rooting for the Chiefs. And uh, who likes the Philadelphia Eagles anyway? I don't think anybody. So rooting for the Chiefs, um, but I'm interested to hear who you're rooting for, who you think is going to win. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the questions. The three questions that I'm going to be answering today are all about finding the cure or you know regenerating hair cell function and things like that. So the first question is from enemy man man 6368 and he asked doctor when will there be gene therapy for hearing loss? So there are a variety of different types of therapies that they're working on. Uh, in general, I would say that they're gene therapy, molecular therapy and stem cell therapy. So when you look at gene therapy, we're really looking at altering genes in order to either prevent a genetic hearing loss or maybe even figuring out how to, how to manipulate genes in order to regrow hair cells that could cure things like sensory neural hearing loss that are developed over the course of time and due to noise exposure, head trauma, things of that nature. Now, when will we see gene therapy? Well, I think it's going to be a while. I'll actually link a, um, a hearing journal article in the description of this video that kind of goes through, you know, kind of what they're working on, what they think is going to happen with gene therapy when it comes to restoring hearing function. Um, and there's a lot of different genes that can cause hearing loss. So to actually go in and have a gene therapy for every single one of those genetic causes of hearing loss would take a lot of time. So I don't think that this is right around the corner. Um, but I did listen to an interesting podcast about something called CRISPR. I think it's C-R-I-S-P-R. -S so that is basically um, one of the things that they're using to do gene therapy. And it's very interesting. I think that that has the potential, not just for hearing loss, but a lot of different genetic conditions that people have. That has the potential to prevent these you know, um, bad genes from actually expressing themselves and, and causing a variety of different conditions and diseases. So um, I think gene therapy is going to happen at some point and it will likely happen, I think, first for individuals who have a genetically related hearing loss. But again, I think it's going to take some time. I do not think that that is right around the corner. I think that there is a much higher probability that different types of therapies end up being more uh, effective and, and actually not more effective, but I think we have a chance of seeing different types of therapies coming out sooner than what we see gene therapy come out. But that leads nicely into the second question here that comes comes from Frantisca. A very interesting step in research for growing hair cells. Will it be effective against tinnitus? Cheers. So what this individual is asking about is uh, FX322 and maybe even FX345. So these are molecular therapies that are injected into your ear, so into your middle ear space, and then the, these molecules will essentially pass through the round window into the cochlea and now these particular drugs can actually get in there and regrow hair cells. So the way that it, this would theoretically work is that it would stimulate progenitor cells inside of the cochlea and it would force them to turn into a hair cell and essentially grow new hair cells and restore cochlear function. Um, and the specific question here is, okay, so if that does show benefit with regrowing hair cells and it restores the hearing function, will this have a positive impact on tinnitus? Well, I have to believe that yes, it would have a positive impact on tinnitus because a lot of the cases of tinnitus are caused by 
reduction of sound making it from your ears to your brain. It's why six out of 10 individuals who treat their hearing loss with hearing aids also see a significant reduction in their perception of tinnitus. So if these drugs or any other drugs that would be used to regrow hair cell function, if they were actually effective, it does have a possibility of, of essentially treating tinnitus at the same time. And honestly speaking, I think that that is probably going to be the biggest effect that we'll see on the treatment of tinnitus. Um, because when you start looking at tinnitus, you know, part of it is due to potentially hearing loss, but then there's this other portion of it that is literally inside your brain, because your brain is causing the perception of the tinnitus. And so it'll be interesting to see if there are any other therapies that can actually address what the brain is doing to generate this sound. But I think that if you kind of Take, take it from the source, which is the hearing loss. If you can treat the hearing loss, oftentimes you can get the tinnitus to subside as well. All right, so we've talked about both gene therapy and molecular therapy. So let's go into our third question that happens to be about stem cell therapy. This one comes from Jody Perkin, 8565. Where would they inject the cells? So, okay, if you were able to take stem cells and grow them into hair cells in a lab, um, how would you either get these hair cells injected into the cochlea or how would you get these stem cells injected into the cochlea that could then grow hair cells? Now, I happen to believe that they would probably, once they identify that a stem cell could be reprogrammed to grow a hair cell, I don't think that they would actually grow the hair cell in the lab. I think they would just inject the stem cell and then let it grow inside of the cochlea. This one is probably the furthest one out. Um, I don't think that using stem cells is going to be very effective, um, or it probably will just take them a very long time to figure this out. Because you can't just take a stem cell, inject it into the cochlea, and have it grow and pro proliferate and actually innervate is, is the biggest thing. You know, you can grow whatever you want to, but if you can't get it to innervate with your nerve to actually take the vibration of sound and stimulate an actual neural response, then it doesn't really serve much of a purpose anyway. You know, uh, uh, form without function means nothing. Like you can grow a hair cell, but if it doesn't actually work, it doesn't matter. Not to mention the chemical composition of the fluid inside of your cochlea is very harsh for a stem cell to be put in there. And, the, and it's, chances are is that the body will actually reject the stem cell. So I don't think it's as easy as if you even could inject and, and break through that round window and then have cochlear preservation without you know causing a fistula and having all of that fluid drain out. I think it'd be very tough to actually introduce stem cells into the cochlea. Now I'm not saying that this is impossible, I'm just saying that this would be very difficult. And as of right now, they have no good way to actually do this, which is why I believe that the, the, the type of therapies that would come first would be first molecular therapy, then gene therapy, and you could it's a toss up between those two, and then stem cell therapy I think is significantly further down the road. But when you think about it, if they get gene therapy figured out or molecular therapy figured out to regrow hair cells and to restore cochlear function, I don't even think that they start, they keep worrying about stem cells. Like what would the point be if you have other two, two other methods that are, you know, potentially easier and actually effective? Why would you go through all the hassle of trying to figure out how you're going to take a stem cell and get it into the cochlea, have it innervate and survive given the harsh chemical, you know, composition inside of the cochlea. So I just don't think stem cell therapy is something that we should be putting a lot of, uh, of our efforts into. Um, but who knows, you know, they might come up with something somewhere in some lab, have it figured out, and then stem cell could be the first thing, you know, and I hope I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they, they come up with something super quick with that and have it be effective. But like I said, I think that someday they are going to figure out how to regrow hair cells or grow hair cells that were never there in the first place and essentially cure hearing loss for lack of a better term. Um, you know, I got into this profession because of me wanting people to be able to hear and hear really well. And if it ends up uh, being a condition that can be cured, I am all for that. I will figure out a different thing to do either inside of this profession or find a different profession that I'm passionate about as well. But hopefully this gave you guys a little bit of hope. I do. There are people working on this stuff. There is a lot of funding that's out there 
to you know cure this epidemic of hearing loss that we have, not just in the United States, but throughout the world. And uh, I hope it's a something that we get to celebrate sooner rather than later. But that is it for this week's vlog, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,